Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. You can get to it online at learnpythonthehardway.org. You can also purchase it in a downloadable format with access to his videos right here for $30. It's a great purchase. I recommend it. But for right now, we're just going to go to read the free HTML online. And if you click on that, it will take you to this page right here, which is the table of contents. For this video, we're going to look at chapter or rather exercise 16 which is called reading and writing files if you click on that it'll take you to this page now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using a few different um, functions actually you can call them functions you can call them methods commands they're, they're things that do things and we're going to be using a few here uh, we're not going to use all of these in this particular lesson we'll use close and write and they are ways of modifying objects. Now, an object is a thing that you load in. A file, if we load it into the memory, is an object. There's other things that are objects also, but you'll see the way that we write the functions is they're used to modify an object. That'll become a little clearer as we go through. Anyhow, here is the text that he wants us to write, and it's a little longer than some of the others, but let me show you how this one works. I'm going to go over to um, my text editor. There we go. The first thing we need to enter is this. From sys, that means from the system library or the system package, that's a collection of programming code, import argv or the argument variables. This makes it possible for us to specify uh, information in the command line when we're calling the program and then have that brought into the program and be able to use it. So, But we have to import it. And that's the first thing we do. Then argv is going to include two things. Uh, so when we are in the command line over here on the right in terminal or in PowerShell, we're going to do, um, you type the word Python, and then you type the name of the file that you want to run. That is the script name. That's this word right here. And then we also type in a file name because we're going to have it write a file for us. It's, it's going to create a document and put some text into it. And so both of those have to be specified right here in the command line when we get going. Okay, the next thing, let's see, you need to include the name of the text file in the command line when you run Python. If you're, oh, by the way, if you're writing or appending to a file. So writing, if you're writing in uh, Python means if, if the text exists, it's just going to delete everything and start over again. On the other hand, if you want to keep what's there and add on to it, that's called appending. Um, and if you are writing or appending and the file does not already exist, it'll just create it for you automatically. It's kind of easy. All right. We're going to put three commands into this, and these are all print. And what that means is stuff that shows up in the console over here in Terminal or PowerShell. Now, again, print here does not mean it, sh it prints through the printer onto a piece of paper. It means it sh it's printed out or it, it displays this text in the console. The first one is that it says we're going to erase. And then this little format code here calls on the file name. And the file name is what we specified when we uh, ran the command. So we're going to erase whatever that file is. And then it actually gives you a choice here. It says, if you don't want that, hit Control C. If you do want that, hit Return. So it's going to wait for us to do one or the other of those things. And you see, this is where it's going to wait for raw input. And it's going to give us a little cursor that's just a question mark. Then it's going to display print opening the file dot dot dot. And then this is where it takes the file name, which again is from up here we specified. W means write. You could put R for read, you could put A for append, and it's going to open that file or create it and open it. And open here means make it accessible to do stuff to. If you're reading, you can't do anything to it. But this means make it open so you can do stuff to it, so we can write on it, and then feed all that into an object or a variable called target. So now when we talk about target, we're talking about this thing that we called right here. And you can call it whatever you want. Zed's calling it target in this case. Um, if you want more info about how files work, you can go over to PyDoc. You know, let me just show you right here. 
I'm going to go to PyDoc. Remember, what that means is asking for the documentation from Python. And we'll just put PyDoc file. And look, now you got lots of information. If I press the space bar, you can get down here to more. There's close, there's flush. Look, here's read. And here is write. Those are the things we're going to be using. And mode file, these are the read and write and append. There's some more choices. And I'm going to press Q to get out of that. Anyhow, uh, W is for write, R is for read, A is for append. If you want to put a plus, it'll let you read and write. So R plus is read and write, or W plus is write and read. R, which is read only, is the default. So if you want to actually be able to write onto it, you got to say something. Okay, then it's going to display in the console the text truncating the file. What that means is getting rid of all the text that's in it. So if you had something there, it's going to be gone. Then it's going to say, I'm going to ask you for three lines. And then this is uh, <clears throat> kind of interesting. It's going, to, it's going to prompt for each line. This is the prompt that it's going to give. Now, you know, up here, we also used a prompt. It was just a question mark. That's when we were just waiting for, for, for a person to either hit Control C or to hit Return. Now we're going to prompt for line one with a colon and a, and a space. And then once a person types that in and hits Return, it'll prompt for line two. Type it in, hit return, it'll prompt for line three. I'm going to use uh, lines from a poem by called Haiku by Roger Paget. And then it says, I'm going to write these to the file. And then down here, what it does is this is our this is our object target. Remember, we created that up here when we made a file with the name that we specified up here. It, it all feeds back. So we have target, and then we're going to be using what's called a function or a method or a command. And that's going to be used right. And that means take whatever information we put into line one. That's the name of another variable or object. Remember, that's the one right here. We waited for it to get some raw input, and it stuck it as a string into line. And that's going to take that line, and it's going to write it into the text file. Then it's going to go down to the next line. That's all this is, is put in a line break. Write the second line, put in a line break. Write the third line, put in a line break. And then, let's see, write and read, read line, truncate and close are examples of commands. Zed calls them commands. You'll also hear them called methods or functions for an object. And in this case, the, the object is a target, which we created just a moment ago. All right, I think we have something else. And finally, we close it. You need to close the file. It's it's a way of cleaning up after yourself because otherwise you might accidentally perform function on, on it when you don't mean to unless, because it'll still be open in memory unless you close it. So anyhow, this one's a little bit long, but you know, it, it's at least half of that is comments. So I'm going to uh, come over here now and I'm going to run that file. Now, I just opened uh, the terminal beforehand, so I'm still in my default directory. Again, the BP here is the name of my computer, and you can change that computer name. Uh, the tilde means my active folder or directory. Uh, you see, if I, if I do PWD for print working directory, you can see what that is short for, users slash BART. That's the home directory on my Mac. And then the space, and then this whole thing right here, the BART and dollar sign is the command prompt. And so, the, and then this is just a blinking cursor right here. So this is where I first need to change the working directory to the one that has my scripts in it. And so you see, for instance, right here, here's my script folder. And you see, it's got this big, long path right down here that gets to it. The easy way to do this is to do CD for change directory, and then just drag the script in, a change directory in a space, and then put that in, click back in here, and hit return. And now you can see that my working directory is scripts, whereas previously it was the tilde, which stood for my home directory. I'm just going to do the PWD to emphasize that. There we are. I'm going to clear the screen by doing Command K. Actually, I'm just going to write the word clear. There we go. All right, but now I'm in scripts, and so now I can call on my script without having to specify the, the full file path or you know all the folders and directories that it's nested in. So I type the word Python to let it know that I'm going to be doing a Python script, and this the name of this file is ex16.py. You see, 
it's it's the same text that we have right here and let's see here i also now watch if i press it right now i'm going to get an error the reason for that is this argv the argument variable is expecting two things and right here i have only one thing i need to put in the name of the file that we're going to create so I'm gonna just use my arrow key to go back up to my last command, and then I'll type in ex16 text.txt. You need to put in that extension. Um, you need to be explicit about that. So I'm gonna create a file called ex16 for exercise 16 underscore text. Now when I do that, it says we're going to erase. Oh, you know what? I didn't show you. That file simply does not exist. Take a look. I go from 15 to 16 to 17. 16 dot text does not exist. Um, and so it says it's going to erase it. Well, there's nothing there to erase. It's gonna create a new file. I got a little, my little question mark. That's where we are in the code right now. I'm gonna hit return because I wanna go ahead and do that. Opening the file and look, now exercise 16 dot text exists, but it's got nothing in it. It's a totally blank file, but that's what we just did. Um, over here with this. Again, if the file doesn't exist already and you're using write or append, it'll create a new file. Now I'm going to ask you for three lines. I'm going to use uh, Ron, uh, Ron Paget's haiku. First, three syllables. Second, seven syllables. Third, It's also sometimes called a meta haiku and, and it follows the three line and syllable. It, it, it's clever. All right, and then I hit return. And now it says I'm going to write these to a file and finally we close it and now check it out. If we come back to my text, now you can see that there's stuff in it. The, the, the text that I wrote now appears in there. Anyhow, that's what's going on with this one. It's a great thing. And I know it looks a little complicated here. You can write this much shorter. You can take out all the comments and you don't, you don't have to have it talking to you to describe what it's doing. You can make it a much shorter program, but being able to open files, write to them, save them is a huge thing that you actually do a million times. And so this is a great thing to know how to do. Anyhow, that's it for exercise 16 and I'll see you in a minute for number 17. Thanks.